know, to capture the fun <laughs> and the love that the music needs to have, then that's got to be the vibe, and it really was. So I was really fortunate that you and Charles and, and everybody on the front line was so enthusiastic, and man, y'all just sound so incredible. Yeah, man. Well, you, I guess, yeah, you know who to pick for this group. I mean, uh, it's not a, a random collection of people who like this music or play it well. I mean, we all really, um, we all really gel, you know, and we all really yeah. love each other's playing. And the, I mean, the hang was so great too, you know. Um, every moment we had when we weren't playing was hilarious and fun, you know, which I think right. uh, is also a big part of that experience and of making a great album, you know, for sure. No, and I mean, I, I love, and you're, you're very right in that it is very deliberate. You know, John and Charles play together a lot in Charlottesville. I played with them together mm -hmm. a lot in Charlottesville. And then separately, I get, you know, got to spend all that time playing with you in New York. You know, I got to play with Chris mm -hmm. in D.C. And so it's kind of all these smaller subsets of the band, you know, ultimately mm -hmm. coming together with this, you know, this mutual approach. And yet, the three of you as soloists have such unique and complementary approaches you know which is why i love how yeah. the solos evolve you know on love is a song and on uh, pure imagination which we'll hear later but you all really complement yeah. each other well as you know as well as being able to just really play within the section and have it sound great yeah i mean i was i mean i was very fortunate to be in that in that room <laughs> with uh, charles and and uh, and john because uh yeah they're incredible musicians and you're right i mean we all have different uh, approaches to a similar thing i mean we're all i feel like we all have, share a lot of the same love for this music and for particular you know streams of this music or things that you know uh, i remember talking to charles and and john you know about Oh, this recording and oh you played that line that sounded like this was that lester young was that this oh this was like a line and bud powell played this thing and you know we're just like getting into all these oh let's check this out sonny and rollins plays like this lick on this one. Oh yeah man it's my favorite oh you know this recording and we were just right, like right. we all love so much of the same music yet we all have you know very different i don't know very but like you know very unique different uh ways to kind of approach it and play in, in different voices i mean the way Charles plays is so beautiful and just warms my heart. And and John too. I mean, in such a different way, his playing is like they're they're both so personal. Like you feel like you know them when when you hear them. Or maybe for me too. Like as I got to know them more, their playing was even more deep to me because I was like, damn, they're really they're playing who they are, you know. And um and they're full of love and they're full of knowledge and they're full of swing and and humor. And, you know, yeah. it's, um, wow, yeah, man. And it's just like, it was a beautiful time to be in that studio, in that room with them. And, you know, obviously with you guys in the adjacent room, swinging your asses off. But, um, but yeah, just being in that room, you know, because I was, you know, with John to my right and with Charles in front of me uh, playing the, the horn section room. And it was just so much fun, so supportive, so like, you know, funny and, 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 uh, and demanding in a sense, but like in a way that it was just, uh, we all were so in, so like, you know, 100% in on what we're doing and how great we want this music to, to sound and and how much we care about it and how much fun it is, you know? So it was just, right. um, it, was a, it was a really great, it was my favorite studio recording that I've done up to up to now. I mean, in, in, in a lot of senses, both in the music, the hang, the people, the, the message, everything was just something I'm behind and on board with. So it was a, a special recording. Oh, it just tickles my heart to hear you say that. You know, and, and let me tell you, it's just such a, I appreciate it, you know, the moments when we really do get everybody in the room together, because they're not as often as I'd like, you know, and then, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get, you know, you and Chris live in New York, I'm in the, in the Northern Virginia area, and then John and Charles are in Charlottesville, so obviously, getting the logistics of all this to work out is no small uh, affair, um, yeah, but it really makes me appreciate those times when I really do get the three of y'all. And I'm so fortunate to have, you know, a lot of folks that I work with that I call, you know, when the three of y'all aren't able to make it and they do a great job and they sound great. Um, but there's something really special when it's, you know, you three guys making that happen. And so it's got me really excited about these album release shows that we're doing in the D.C. and Virginia yeah, area. And uh, we're going to do a little recording here at the How while we're there. Ooh. and got a lot of exciting stuff. You know, I'm just so excited to, to hopefully, you know, hear the reaction from folks. I just hope that people, you know, are as excited about it as we are. So it's definitely captured in the recording. I wanted yeah, to man. take people out feel... with uh, another recording of Pure Imagination because you take another great solo on my sort of 
I don't think this charge is that hard, but horn players have a tough time with it, or at least they make it seem like they do at first um, with the meter changes, even though it doesn't sound like anybody has a hard time. Everybody that plays it sounds great. I think it's all in their head. But you take a particularly <laughs> awesome solo on uh, Pure Imagination, and so we're going to lead into that right now. Wow, and there's another spirited solo from my man Elad Cohen on the trombone from Pure Imagination. Again, I just love the way you play and the way that you follow, you know, you follow, you develop an idea. You know, it's not like you have an agenda, you know. It could have been a very different solo. It would have had the same spirit and energy, but it would have been following a different thing. And that's something that I really love about your playing too is that just the ability to be in the moment and go with something it's something um you try to you know live in the moment i think i mentioned that earlier um and studios sometimes you know takes you out of it when you have to do like 10 takes of something and then you're like well i just you know i was improvising trying to be free nine times just now it's kind of hard to repeat it but uh you know with this recording like you know we just did you know one or two takes of everything and usually the first one was already great and the second one was just a bonus one and um I guess partly because, you know, I haven't really gotten before that session a chance to play um, for a while with, you know, alongside uh, Alan and Chris and yourself. I mean, yourself maybe a little bit more, but, but even still, you know, it was, uh, before that recording session, I was up in New York. Yeah, it was about four stuff months. For a while. It was about four months before those shows, you know, where yeah, we did man. a lot of the music leading up to the session, so. Yeah, and just like... You know, from from those first takes, man, I, it was just so much fun to like ride the wave of you know you, Chris, and, and Alan. Just, like, whenever anyone was soloing, it was just everything felt so good. So it was so easy to follow or to you know lead a little bit, have an idea, and then have you know you play something or or Chris or Alan respond in some way that you know makes me want to go this way or that way. And it was just so much fun to to go with the flow that day because. Everything was just flowing, you know? Yeah. The whole band serves the music, you know? And that's what really shines through. And that's what I think can sometimes be lost in more, can, like, modern jazz recordings. Is that there's this... It, it gets taken to this place where the listener kind of loses interest. But, um, I mean, even myself. I find myself, like, listening to stuff where I'm just like, man, I'm either not in the headspace to listen to something like this, or I'm just kind of it's mm-hmm. self-absorbed. And it's not all, but certain things. And that's one thing that I really didn't want to have with this band. I wanted to sort of illustrate that you can really play some stuff that's musical and like challenging and that has, you know, nutritional value, as they might say, but mm-hmm. it also is appealing to folks that folks want to listen to, you know, and that we can make that connection. Yeah, I feel like this album is very much that where you can both uh, kind of put it on in a sense in the background while you're doing stuff and not pay close attention to it and really enjoy it and like, you're like, yeah, there's such a good vibe in the room now that this is on. And at the same time, if you listen to it closely, you'll be like, ah, oh, damn, there's all these little moments that are just fucking great and I, I didn't even realize. And um, it's fun, you know, both the way. Like, I, I guess I was talking to somebody the other day about Coltrane's um, Love Supreme, and they were saying that you have to be in a very particular mindset to enjoy that album because if you're not then you kind of just put it on the background it seems kind of it might either even seem pretentious when you're not paying attention to it or like a bit too much um or it's just hard to listen to because it's so intense i guess um you right, can't just have right. it on the background uh, but if you listen to it closely you're like oh my god whereas i feel like this album has both you know if you listen to it closely you're like oh man this is so great and listen to the you know listen to this guy's playing and listen to that guy's thing and listen to how they just communicate and all these little things are happening everyone's on the same page but 
at the same time, you just put this on in the background and do stuff and kind of dance along and swing to it, and it'll just make you feel better. It'll, it'll just brighten your day while you're doing something else, I feel like. This is just that a kind of album that, that everyone can enjoy. I mean, who doesn't uh, want to sing about some love, you know? Right. And for, you know, the only good love is worth, is, uh, worth sharing, or the only love, rather, worth sharing is good love. So we don't want to share right. bad love. <laughs> So, that's right uh, Only good yeah love. it was definitely you could feel the love and I hope that folks do dance along which is kind of a rarity now with certain recordings that are called mm. jazz as it were jazz yeah um, but Lodge can you yeah. tell the listeners where they can find you on the internet I know that they can find they can find us on the front line through you know our outlets but do you have any uh, pages that you can promote here for folks to follow you um, I have um I suppose uh, on Instagram where I, uh, I uh, post uh, on there a little bit about gigs. Um, I'm kind of uh, starting a, a, a project of my own soon, but it's not up and running yet. And when I do, um, I, I have a website that's just down at the moment, and I'm going to bring it back up once this project is um, a little bit more realized, um, which is like a duo project I'm doing with a bit more electronic stuff with a good friend of mine who's a drummer where I can play both keys and trombone. Um, so you can look out for that on Instagram, I suppose. Um, I believe it's underscore Alad Cohen underscore. And uh, yeah, but, I'm but, looking you know, forward to hearing out, that. Uh, yeah, man. It should be a fun project. Well, Alad, thanks so much for joining us today. You were, he's been at the front of the line here. And uh, just again, man, it's great to talk to you. You know, I know that, you know, leading you these too, lives man. in different places, it's not often we get to talk too much. And uh, But thanks again for everything that you've done, for the record, for the band so far. And I'm just so excited for everything that uh, we're going to do. I'm glad you're already thinking about that second album. I am too. Yeah, man. And uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Again, you've been listening to Elad Cohen. He's the trombonist and Jack will be in the front line and he's been featured on uh, multiple arrangements here. You've been, you've listened to the title track. Love is a song. Anyone can sing as well as his solo on pure imagination. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next time. A lot can happen in six seconds. A rodeo ride, a dramatic basketball win, and the world record holder can solve a Rubik's Cube. Six seconds is how long it takes for an 18-wheeler traveling at a safe speed to come to a complete stop. And in those six seconds, that truck will travel the length of two football fields. So please, give them room. Never cut in front of a large truck for any reason. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Jack Kilby in the Frontline's debut release, Love is a Song Anyone Can Sing, Volume 1, is available now at all your favorite online music retailers, as well as streaming services. 